So we go back to Visual Studio Code. Remember, if you work from the Explorer, you can make changes to files. But if you notice here, there's really no way to to run a program. You can go here and you can hit like Run without debugging. But we've not configured these pieces. Those are different types of configuration. But if you click on this last icon here on the left pane, panel, then you can see that most, except with the exception of Hello World, most <coughs> folders have an exe and a library. The library is almost like the standard library, but it's like my library. Like I'm creating my own C++ code with functions so that I can use in my programs, kind of creating like my library, not the C++ standard li library, but my library. Once I create a library, then I can use it in an executable. And all this is glued together with a CMake list file. And you won't be quizzed on that, but if you're curious, you can come in here and look at the, file, the folder structure, and I'm sure you can make sense of it just by looking at these two lines, right? Once uh, we make changes, say I make a change here, then I'm already here, then I can just run in terminal. Or if I'm curious to, or I want to make sure I have good syntax, then I can just hit build. Okay, and once I hit build, then it'll check my program for syntax. Say it will not run my program. It'll just check for syntax and create an executable, okay? So last week, I talked about the integer data type. And uh, I showed the example using last semester's repository. I I won't go to that repository, but what I have to do right now is come to my uh, GitHub. And if I bring this down here and show it to you, this is my GitHub for this semester, right? Fall 2021, blah, Gonzalez, ACC, whatever, right? And uh, I have master, a master branch. So the thinking behind the master branch or the main branch is we only want code that works and runs some kind of feature, some new feature in C++, right? So I explained a little bit of, the, of that process last week. But what I want to do right now is I want to create a branch of the master. What's a branch? It's a copy of master, right? The thinking behind this is that if there's three developers or five or 10 or n developers working on code, each one gets assigned some piece of the software, right? In this case, my piece, so if I click here, right? And then I type uh, ex, for example, dash 01, and then data types. So I want to create a branch, right? And it's going to be named example 01 data types. It'll be an exact, exact same copy of all the files and folders here, but it'll be a copy. Okay, so then I come here and then I create the branch. So notice now I have two branches. Okay, so I have the main, the main or the master and then I have EX01 data types. Since master is considered to be like the clean one or the untouchable one or the good one, anytime the build engineer or my boss wants me to create an executable of my latest and greatest program, I can simply go to master and I can be sure that that code's gonna generate a, a good executable program with uh, the fewest amount of bugs, right? Because it's already been tested by the developer and by the QA team. So if uh, we wanna look at, at a picture of this in memory, right? So. I go here, so uh, branches. So I found my uh, my good surface pen. This is uh, the master repository. So when I created a branch, I simply created a copy, exact same copy, ex01 dot 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 of master. So when so when I'm working on files on my computer, I want to be working on the copy of master, right? 
So that's my goal right now. So I come back here to Visual Studio Code. And I see master here. That's not what I want to work with. So I go source control. I click on source control. Then I select pull, push. And then I say fetch. That goes to the cloud and reads all the branches into my computer, right? So I come here. So if I click on master and then I'm like, okay, I want to <clears throat> I wanna refresh master, right? So it should refresh master for me. And now I should see EX01. Well, I should see it. Oh, I should have deleted this repository. But all those other folders for now, ignore them, right? The key thing here is now I'm working with EX01 data types, okay? Meaning I'm working with a copy of master. Why? Because theoretically, in the real world, some other developer would be working on maybe example zero two or feature two, okay? And then maybe another on bug 100 and then another one on bug 101, right? So as each developer is completing their work and it's been tested by the developer, by the senior software engineer, by the quality assurance team, by the testing team, only at that time will it go and be saved to master, okay? Here, I'm the only one, you're the only one working on this, right? I'll, uh, this video will be posted so that you can see how this works, right? If you're kind of confused. Again, will I be tested on this? The only piece that you'll test is to follow directions for your homework. I'll ask you create a branch for homework and then I'll have the steps for you, for you all and then you'll have to do what I just did, okay? So then I come here and I know I have this echo variable function that I demonstrated last week. So again, we work with header. Why? Because that's how the industry works with C++, right? And that allows us to create scalable software. What's scalable? Software that can work for small projects, for medium projects, and for large projects. Small being I don't know, 100 to 250, 500, 1,000 lines of code, medium, you know, 100,000 lines of code, large millions of lines of code, right? So this will work and scale up, okay? It says uh, one integer parameter, right? So we know in C++ that we can use int. And then the num name is, you can be whatever you want it to be, okay? I just select num. Again, I stated this last week, but I'll repeat it. I'm promising C++ with a semicolon. I want to create a function named echo variable that returns an integer, accepts one integer parameter, or whole number, and I'll write the code later for you. That's what the semicolon is telling C++. So the compiler will make us keep that promise, right? First step in the int.cpp, again, int, I made it up. It can be whatever name you want it to be, okay? I say include, so I want to include my own file int.h. Why do I want to include it? Because our CMake uh, configuration calls for integer.h and integer.cpp to work together, okay? And then again, that's how the industry works. No semicolon at the end. Open close curly brace. We'll simply say return num. Like that's all we're saying here. Return num. So we created a function, right? So usually what you want to do, your first instinct is, okay, I want to see if my function works. And you want to go to main and you want to use it, right? So then if you want to use it, if you say echo here, it doesn't know what you're talking about, meaning you have to help C++ compiler. So then you have to include int.h. Once you do that, with this include statement and the CMake configuration that we have here, this CMake configuration right here, then everything's glued or stitched together, right? Notice now our <coughs> code helper finds echo variable and then we can use it, but that's not what we want to do first. We want to make sure it works and we create a test case for it. So we go to examples, data types. I know we did this last week, right? But I want to do this here briefly, so I'll going quickly through the example. I have to include, include what? int.h. 
I see it there, tab key, types it in for me. Just like last week, I'll use this as my template to create a new test case. So verify echo variable function. What should it do? Should return parameter value. Okay, so then require a require say true or false or a boolean on the left side, a boolean on the right side. Okay, so if you were gonna use echo variable here, you would say echo variable and then pass it some number, right? And then you would do whatever you wanted. So that's the same thing you do over here, but in this case we want to say I know if I use echo variable and I use the value five, double equal sign to compare, it better be equal to five. Okay, so now we are ready to run this test case. So I was working in Explorer. Again, in Explorer, I cannot run, co uh, run code. In CMake, if I'm working off this editors, then I'm just here and then I can say build so that it can check the syntax for my .h and .cpp files. Notice right here in the center, anytime it says build and you see exit code zero, then you're good. Everything's correct. If I want to uh, run my test case, then I have to go to the test folder, examples, 01 data types. I open this file. And then I can go ahead and run my test case, right? So the CMake configuration is telling C compiler where to find the files that this guy needs. It's all in here. Do you all have to know that for an, any exam or anything? No. All these configurations will always be set up for you all, okay? But here, if I want to run it, then I say, I'll run. Okay, I'm going to pause it and somebody remind me to start it, okay? So, um, again, so this is what we initially see that it passed but we don't see any detail we want to see details we click on the terminal window and then up arrow and then we type dash s and then that gives us the detail that helps us right right now it's kind of like easy because it's just one function right we want to make it fail so we know that if we type six here it'll fail so let me so notice it, show, it shows us that it failed. We want to see everything up arrow dash s enter. So up at the top here, let me scroll slowly. Notice that it's saying echo variable 5 is correct, but this one is not correct, right? So so it's helping us, right? In this case, I'll be like, oh, I meant to put 6 here. And now I'm testing a very easy function, okay? Which should not be a big deal, okay? And then we go to main and we can use it you can say include remember standard library we need the io stream or the input output stream library that tells the compiler oh you want to use something from that file and i say yes i want to use the character output or the c out and i want to output whatever echo variable outputs for me okay, i need Two of these guys. Running terminal. Oh, here it is. Maybe there was just too many, too much output that I just missed it. But yeah, it's running. So we see value is five. Okay.